I'd like to introduce you guys to the newest field of medicine. It's called epigenetics. Epigenetics is a term you may not be familiar with, but it's basically the science of our genes. Specifically, gene expression and turning genes on or off. Now, this new specialty is going to transform medicine. It's the most complicated, uh, complex specialty ever to exist. And the research is so highly technical that even when you discuss it, it almost sounds like a foreign language. Now, ironically, the tools it's giving us are some of the most basic things you can imagine. Food or derivatives of food are now being used to prevent and in some cases treat disease. Now, when I was first exposed to this field of epigenetics at the University of Michigan, and then again at the National Institutes of Health, I'll admit I didn't fully appreciate the potential that it held. I loved my work and I was thrilled when my 10 hour experiments would map 80 to 100 base pairs of DNA. I think I maybe mapped around 1,000 base pairs of DNA altogether, which sounds like a lot until I tell you that there are 3 billion base pairs of DNA in the human genome. And for those of you who don't know what a genome is, it's basically the instruction manual of how to build a human. There's one of these in every cell in your body. And it's made up of four bases that we abbreviate A, T, G, or C. And if you can picture an alphabet with these four letters, that's three billion letters long, it gives you a sense of how big this molecule is. And there's one of these inside each of the multiple trillions of cells in your body. Now, it took all of medicine a decade to completely map the human genome once. It was an incredible feat and it stands as probably the greatest medical accomplishment in the history of medicine. Today, 15 years later, you can have your entire genome sequenced in less than 24 hours for less than $2,000. That's the speed at which this technology is progressing. And it took me about 10 years of practicing traditional medicine. I was practicing trauma and emergency medicine until I was so moved by the advances that I saw that I completely changed my career. And I went from trauma medicine to preventive nutritional medicine so that I could use some of these new tools to help my patients. Now, the reason that I changed direction and the reason that we want to get past where we are today in terms of medical treatments is this. Medicine is very good today at keeping you alive and sick a long time. <laughs> We're very good at that. We're not so good at getting you well and keeping you well. And in a big way, epigenetics holds a key to the next step in fixing this problem. Let me give you an example. This is spina bifida. This used to be an extremely common condition. It's a birth defect where the spinal column doesn't properly close during development and infants are born with a hole in their spine. Now in the 1960s, uh, the survival from this was 10 to 12%, depending on the complexity of the surgery you had to have. In the 70s and 80s, we improved the survival, but it was still over a million dollars to care for somebody over their lifetime. Well, today, we have dramatically reduced the incidence of spina bifida. And in many cases, we've eliminated it altogether. So what was this miracle breakthrough treatment that made this possible? It was one milligram of folic acid added to a prenatal vitamin. And to give you an idea of the impact this had. I've been a physician for 19 years. I've treated roughly 50,000 patients. This recommendation was made right before I started practice. And I have yet to see a single case of spina bifida. Now, here's what I love about epigenetics. I could tell you that while well, we sequenced the gene for methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase and we found single nucleotide polymorphisms that slow the <laughs> efficacy of the enzymes involved in the folate biochemistry pathways. <laughs> or I could tell you, take one milligram of folic acid and you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> and that's really the beauty of and the benefit of epigenetics. This is complicated, complex science leading to very simple, easy to understand and implement solutions. Okay. Let me give you a different example. This is rheumatoid arthritis. It's an autoimmune condition 
that's marked by severe inflammation of the joints. It's incredibly painful and debilitating. And uh, in the U.S. today, we have dozens of drugs to treat this that we spend over a billion dollars a year on each of them. None of these drugs offer a cure. And all of them carry severe and significant side effect risks, including cancer. Or if you read the uh, little black box, it will say, warning may cause infections leading to death. Now, I don't know about you, but if one of the side effects of my medications is that it can kill me, that <laughs> kind of feels like it's defeating the purpose. Now, in contrast, in many cultures around the world, and really for thousands of years, people have utilized turmeric to alleviate symptoms of arthritis. Nobody knew how it worked. Nobody knew why it worked. They just knew that it seemed to help. Well, today, thanks to epigenetics, we now know that curcumin from turmeric can actually turn off genes that trigger inflammation. The same inflammation that's responsible for the swelling, pain, and destruction of the joints. Okay. We're not talking about changing the genetic code. We're talking about altering gene expression, which genes are on or off or how they're expressed. And in spina bifida, we're doing this before you're born, rheumatoid arthritis, this is an example as an adult, but both are cases where we're use, utilizing derivatives of food to affect gene expression. Now, the idea of food as medicine is certainly not a new one. It's been around probably since the dawn of mankind. And for a long time, it was all we had. You know, we had food, herbal concoctions, prayer, and we had some barbaric treatments like drilling holes in your skull to let the evil spirits out. Well, thankfully today, we have some new options. <laughs> we have pharmaceutical drugs. <laughs> we have chemotherapy. We have radiation treatments. And we can perform surgeries. So you would think that this has led to better treatment options, less invasive options, simpler options, or less risky options. But in truth, what we do today, in many ways, is just as barbaric. We just have much better anesthesia. Now, if you take a simple appendectomy, for example, this is uh, where we take your appendix out. Simple procedure, we do this every day. This one simple surgical procedure requires a medication to render you unconscious, another medication to paralyze you so you don't move during surgery, third medication for anxiety. Make sure you give that one before you paralyze somebody. <laughs> Fourth medication for uh, infection prevention. And a fifth medication, usually a narcotic, for pain all before we even start the surgery. So while mainstream medicine is uh, important and often life-saving, oftentimes it's still pretty aggressive and invasive and therefore risky. And what gets lost in this is that we've almost completely moved away from the idea of food as medicine. But this complex field of epigenetics is starting to bring us back and is turning out to be an interesting road back now, you may ask, how could a food replace a pharmaceutical drug? Or how could food replace chemotherapy or a surgery? That sounds impossible. But the answer has to do with our genes, our DNA. See, we now know that certain foods can turn on or turn off certain genes. And we're beginning to understand which nutrients will do this for specific diseases. And when we get that right, we may eliminate the need for a medication or chemotherapy or a surgery. Now, I will say one of the things that I really do like about modern medicine is that we have incredibly powerful tools of analytics. We can look in great detail at the mechanism of action of certain nutrients right down to the molecular level. And what we're finding is that in many cases, the effects are actually more powerful than we had anticipated. And over the past 10 years, there has been a virtual explosion of new knowledge in this area. And one of the things that it's created is that we have a new field of experts, each with very narrowly focused knowledge. The areas of study are becoming so small that we're learning more and more, but about less and less. And the running joke is that ultimately, the uh, ultimate specialist will know everything about nothing. Now, it sounds comical, but there's a hint of truth to it. 
And it's actually the natural progression of research. That as we focus in on smaller and smaller areas, but we expand our knowledge around those areas, we're discovering some really great things. Like we can affect our genes before we're born. Or in rheumatoid, we can affect our genes as adults. Well, we've also discovered through epigenetics that we can protect against certain mutations that occur with foods. See, in your DNA molecule, that three billion base pair molecule, you have mistakes. I have mistakes in mine. We don't feel them, and they don't cause any symptoms, but they're there, and they make it more likely for certain diseases to occur. Now, statistically speaking, there are 10 people in this room with a mutation that makes it twice as likely for you to develop colon cancer or heart disease. There are 15 people in this room with a mutation that makes it four times as likely for you to develop cataracts. And there are 20 people in this room with the mutation that makes it more likely for you to develop a neurodegenerative disease. Now, the good news is that we already know which nutrients are needed to help. And if taken in high enough amounts, these nutrients can prevent any harmful effect occurring from these mutations. There are currently about 50 conditions we know of that can be remedied this way, and that list continues to grow every day. So epigenetics has given us a way to affect our gene expression before we're born as adults. It helps protect us against certain mutations that can occur. Well, how about a disease that's already occurred, like a cancer? Or what about a cancer that's already spread? Could epigenetics give us some new tools here? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. Because we now know that cancers have their own DNA. And they have mutations in that DNA that allow for uncontrolled growth. These mutations cause abnormal receptors to appear on the surface of the cells. These are called cancer stem cells. And if we can block those receptors, these cancer cells cannot divide and the cancers can't spread. So the search is on and the race is on to try to identify and find compounds that can do this. Well, it turns out we have found some. And not only did we find compounds that can block these cancer stem cell receptors, they leave healthy tissue alone. This is what you would call a smart drug if one were to exist. And this is what medicine has been searching for, a way to treat disease and leave healthy tissue alone. You see, all chemotherapy is pretty indiscriminate, meaning it will kill cancer cells, but it will also kill healthy tissue. We hope we kill all the cancer before we kill the patient. It's not exactly a perfect solution. So what were these compounds that were discovered? It may surprise you. Here's an example. Curcumin, our old friend curcumin from turmeric. This has been found to block cancer stem cell receptors CD44, CD24, HER2, and P10. Here's another example. Piperine from black pepper can block these same receptors. And another example, sulforaphane from broccoli has very potent direct anti-cancer effects. Now, you can't simply eat these foods to get the effect because you'd have to eat several pounds of them every day. But we can isolate and concentrate these specific nutrients, and they have very powerful disease-fighting effects. So foods that we have used for thousands of years are turning out to have benefits we didn't anticipate, and they work in ways that we never could have imagined. And picture being able to treat a cancer that's already spread with something as simple as a derivative of an herb. Now, we're not quite there yet, and I'm not telling you that if you have cancer that you can just go eat turmeric, broccoli, and black pepper. But what I am saying is there's great reason for hope and optimism as we continue our search for treatments and cures. And it's interesting how this complex, complicated field of epigenetics is bringing us full circle back to the idea of food as medicine. And I think this is a wonderful thing. So as our researchers continue to learn more and more about less and less, epigenetics is giving us ways to use food as medicine to treat more and more using less and less. And maybe someday, 
like the specialist who knows everything about nothing, epigenetics will give us a way to treat almost everything with almost nothing. That may not be as far-fetched as it sounds. Thank you.